thought we'd do the much requested van tour. <laughs> Why was I so excited something, about that? Something we've left right to the end of the trip to do. <laughs> we did that. We do that every time. I I will say now. I, f I don't feel. Like, I feel like this van tour is going to be good and interesting for a lot of people. I don't think it's going to be quite like a Mercedes Sprinter van tour where you've got limited space and all the hints and tricks and nooks and crannies where you hide everything that's really cool and really interesting. This van's a lot bigger than the Sprinter and we've not had to really adapt that many things. We have adapted and modified a few bits but we haven't had to like, you know we really had to think didn't we about the Sprinter with a, as, as a family of seven to fit in it and get all of our clothes in and enough for a long trip and we had like loads of cool things that Chris had done to it and we haven't had to do that much work really on this van have we? We are going to go on. <laughs> <laughs> After this trip Chris is like I want to do this and I want to do that <clears throat> and don't you think this would be cool and I'm just like you do what you want love. That's the thing though is that do what you with, want. <laughs> with any van it's like why the Sprinter? The Sprinter started off basic and then the next trip in Ireland it developed a lot. It was a bit better. And then in and the, then, the summer trip yeah, it was mega it was like we had, in the winter trip it was boss. Yeah we had some really cool features. So every time you go in it, you live in it, you learn what you need to do to it and we've learned a lot over the summer of things that we need to change about this for definite. Hopefully. And when we get home, yeah, got well, I haven't. <laughs> well, we aircon, oh nice. yeah, aircon, air proper aircon. Oh, I won't be going on another trip into Europe in summertime without proper. I mean, I'm saying proper aircon. We, I, I feel like I need to just say again that we didn't leave for this trip thinking, oh, we haven't really got aircon, but we'll be fine. We have proper aircon. We, we do have aircon. This van comes with aircon built in, but it's just not good enough for the temperatures that we've experienced we also came with a portable aircon machine that we'll show you in a second that didn't work great and so we bought another one which was quite expensive and even that didn't work it's not that we came ill-equipped it, it, it does work it's just that number one the temperatures were too much to I'll, I'll explain about that later chris can explain it's, that it's, it's electrically complicated it's to do with vans being off grid blah 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 yeah. so I'll, I'll explain that in a minute chris will explain not in a minute uh, you know <laughs> chris will explain those later but yeah there are a few so we definitely want ceiling air cons now i will start this tour off by showing you the ceiling here in the living area so we've got three well we've got well they're all quite big actually aren't they this one up here is massive um, as you can see, we will be replacing these, what these call like fascias type thing. No, they're, they're, these are fine. I've got all these bits. They're not what? broken. They're, they're out. They're out, but yeah, but they've they've yeah, popped off like because this bit, trip. Yeah, basically they're clipping and out and they've, yeah. they're kind of, a couple of them are a bit loose. So I just took them all out. Yeah, because they kept falling off. off. The lights, if you see, look. Yeah, because they're lights. Yeah, there we go. The light up on a night time. Yeah, that one's still standing. <laughs> that's the last one that's still in. That's still standing. Anyway, we've got this one here. We've got another one down here and another one all the way down there. So we're not losing much light space so if we take one, out the middle this one. one will get replaced and an air, a roof mounted air conditioner will be there. Yeah, a roof like a mounted. 12 volt one yeah. for off grid. We're also going to need one in our bedroom right at the back down there. When I say, when I say there's a lot to change, interiorly living wise there's not a lot to change what there is a lot to change with is things like electrical stuff like the air conditioners a much bigger battery bank for like being off grid longer just a couple of things i'll explain them later though nothing major like inside no. to live in. maybe we'll update like maybe we'll change some decor of some sort in here to make it yeah. a bit different for next time i don't know but i actually the mm. one thing that sold this van to us was the decor mm. inside because most vans this size generally have dark interior quite dark woody interior quite yeah. dark like mahogany type dark wood and the seating areas are usually not quite suitable for larger families and um, sometimes it's upholster is that the word yes yeah, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sometimes it's you know sometimes they're just like one little two-seater and then a tv over this side or something like that and i love that this living space is not just absolutely massive and fits all seven of us comfortably on this like big u-shaped sofa but it's also leather so it's super easy to wipe clean if anything gets spilt by the little ones which has happened quite a few times on this trip a few things we did add to the van before we came away was these blackout curtains this van did come with 
white ones but Chris wanted to buy these grey ones because they're blackout so obviously these protect people from looking in when it's dark outside and we have the lights on and it also protects the light from coming in so for us on a morning time or should I say the children on a morning time I'm blasting in through this window here this bed up here is Esme's and Isla's and they also have their own little curtains which they mainly leave open don't they? Yeah most. Most of the time they leave those open but there's sometimes if they're like playing their games and they want a bit of privacy that they'll close those over. So Isla sleeps here and then Esme sleeps on that side down there. This is a really good size double bed actually. Um, they've got a few little trinkets and things up there. I don't know if you can see in the corner, but at the side of the fan and her plant, they've got a TV, which is just a freestanding TV. So sometimes if they want to watch a movie together that doesn't involve the whole family, Esme will move her pillow to the side of Isla's <laughs> up there and they can both lay comfortably and watch a movie. They've also both got a window, which they absolutely love, especially when it was warm. If they open both, it creates like a breeze going through and they love that and then they've also got their own little roof window up there as well really cute little living space another thing we changed when we bought this van in this living space here is the tv it did have a smaller tv on this mount here and we just changed this where was this from from the caravan or something the sprinter yeah. so we got the one out of the sprinter and popped it there this has been a really really nice cozy space to watch movies which we've done quite a bit on this trip one thing that chris also updated in the living space but also throughout the whole van was the lighting chris is very particular <laughs> about his lighting it can't be white it can't be yellow it has to be just right so we changed the fascia lightings the fascia, um, what is it called? The fascias on these lights here. There's one there, one there, and one all the way down there. And these were really old, yellowy looking things. They were just bulb lights, they weren't LEDs. Yeah, they were just bulb LEDs. lights. Um, and they are really, really bright lights. And they, they're really nice. They're really awesome on a night time. Um, Chris also put, on, put in these LED color changing lights the whole way around the van they don't just go around the living space they also go around the kitchen the dinette which is just a little bit further down there and we've also got them in our bedroom as well so oh no what's going on there it's me, oh it's the kitchen ones those are attached to the kitchen ones but um we usually have them on purple and they just feel so cozy on a night time and even when you're outside the van so if we're all sat like outside with the awning and thing awning out and things just looking at the van it just looks so inviting like you want to get in the van don't you and just be all night it's probably one of my favorite things you actually did yeah it's cool the lights and when you were saying like i'm gonna put led light i was thinking oh my gosh such a waste of money uh don't actually talk about lights and wasting money because if anybody remembers in the sprinter van chris wanted to spend a stupid amount of money in my opinion on a light mirror for the sprinter ah. what was it how much was that less than 100. oh wow so it's like a, a mirror that he put in the sprinter van and he spent so much he spent, it was less than 100 but it was still expensive um and i remember going mad i was like i can't believe you spent i just put the light on and I get a 5.99 mirror from home bargains and he's like no this one's cool because this one lights up i'm like so what we've got lights in the ceiling anyway I did like the mirror in the sprinter van but I can't say I was best impressed when I came to this trip went into the bathroom and noticed another one just casually placed on the wall and I know it didn't come from the sprinter van because that one went with the sprinter van so yeah anyway we'll get to the bathroom in a second um what else can I show in here we did add a few things like this little bookshelves these are great there's so many different books all behind here Mila and Jace like to pick out the book to read on an evening we did get these <laughs> spice jars as well but it's just been so hot and sometimes sticky in the van there's no point storing them in there i'm sure we should have filled these with sand from like places we went oh yeah that's a good idea actually you know instead of it being like a spice thing we should have yeah. filmed them with sand or something anyway they'll be there for another trip 
these cupboards here, one, two, three, are food. <laughs> Nothing really exciting in those. It's all just like cereals and food and things like that. And then we've got four cupboards on this side. One, two, three are the girls' personal belongings. So they've each got a cupboard with their personal things inside and also one packing cube with so many outfits. They each squeeze in a different amount, like between like five and seven outfits. They're in a packing cube on one shelf and then on the other shelf they've got just their personal belongings that they kind of want immediately in the van. They do also have more storage for clothes and personal things in the garage at the back of the van, which we'll get to in a little bit. This last cupboard on this side is the junk cupboard. <laughs> so yeah. It's, it's not really that bad really, it's yeah. just got books and boxes. We've got and some like games that. and some books. We've got a few bits from Esme's birthday up there. We've got the new tablet box that we had to buy after we got burgled. Bubble machines, torches, just random bits. And then one, two, three is food. And then in this last one here, it's kind of like a media cupboard. It's a little control centre for, our, we've got a satellite dish on the roof that pops up on like a, an arm, like a robot arm thing. And then it picks up satellite TV wherever we are in the world. So, and that the satellite TV is rigged up to all the TVs in the van. So Esme and Isla's this living room one and the TV that's in our bedroom as well. Yeah. At the back, they're all rigged up to and the And then there's box. some gaming things of Isabel's because she has the Xbox set up here. I say Isabel's, it's not just Isabel's. Everyone gets to use it, but it's Isabel's mainly. Isabel mainly plays on that. So she's got some other gaming bits in there And they're just well. all our remote controls for everything in there as well. Yeah. And then we have the kitchen area. This is such a nice space. And um, we did have to make a couple of adaptive adaptions, adaption, add-ons, uh, mainly for surface space, which I'll show you in a second. But it's a really, really nice, bright, airy kitchen. So one thing that I do love about the kitchen in this van is the storage space. There's so much space that we've even managed to add a few little bits like an ice machine that can be easily stored away and not left out and the ice machine has been absolutely fantastic this trip definitely recommend those um random bits in some of the cupboards we've got like shelf knives cheese cutters lots of kitchen utensil bits in those top ones. In the drawers, we've just got um, cutlery and things like that. And then we've got two boxes in the cupboards down here that hold um, plates, not very neatly, I've got to say, <laughs> but plates, bowls, cups, flasks and things for Jason Miller as well. There's a few control panels and things up here, which Chris can go through. Uh, in a little bit he's probably best to explain those we've got a great sized sink and then over here we've got a full oven which is blooming awesome we keep pans in the drawer here the oven we've got a grill and then obviously a gas hob as well um it's really cool i will admit though i do prefer to cook outside we'll show you the outdoor kitchen that chris kind of built in in a little bit and i don't think i think on this trip how many times have we cooked in this van maybe like, maybe like three or four times maybe like three or four times and all the other times has been outside because i do much prefer it but as far as vans and van kitchens go this is a really good one it's got the extractor fan um and just basically everything you could possibly need in a kitchen also has more storage space up there it has a microwave, we've got the toaster and the kettle set up on here. Um, we've got the freezer here and a really good sized fridge here. Oh, the fridge! The fridge is one of those things that we've debated whether we need to change or not. We have had a few issues. Basically, it's not, it doesn't work as efficiently as we need it to. Basically, we bought a temperature gauge whilst we were here because I was like, this fridge just doesn't feel that cold. Like, it is cold, but we've basically not trusted meat or dairy products or even milk. We don't use our milk in there now, do we? No. What is in here? Let me see. Okay, so we've got drinks, butter, fruit, and sauces. 
and some chocolate in the bottom as well um and sauces and jam so that's what we're keeping in the fridge and that's pretty much all we're keeping in the fridge in the freezer we're keeping milk guys now there has been a few times we've got up and it's been completely frozen but most of the time the freezer just keeps it really 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 cold um, not actually frozen which we're not quite sure we're not we don't really understand why we've also got a fridge from the sprinter van in the back and that's where we keep meat there because that is a really cold fridge and it works really really well just coming back down here because it's a bit lighter i can't reach the van's like four meters high i cannot reach the roof the roofs in this van to open the blinds to get more light down there so um yeah the fridge of fr the fridge freezer i'm not sure if it's just those style fridges are not quite efficient when you're in super high temperatures or if ours is just broke so and we need to buy a new one so we're not too sure we might look into that though when we get back home definitely we're gonna replace it 100 we're gonna oh okay. i don't trust it anymore it's going there we go we don't trust it we only trust it for drinks we've had ice lollies and ice pops and things and they just they just stay cold for like three weeks and then one day they'll suddenly just freeze over and it's like whoa what's happened to the freezer why is everything frozen but then it'll go another three weeks and it'll just not not freeze anything again so it's not consistent you know it's just not consistent so this little bad boy here, I think I've shown this before. I actually showed this, I think, before we came away. This is actually a chopping board from Ikea. And <laughs> Chris, so <good. laughs> I thought you was mad when you bought this. I was like, what planet are you on? Are you joking? But this has been a godsend, especially when we're making, like I say we, Chris, is making cups of tea on a night time or on a morning. Uh, he's always the one that does the cups of tea and things. It's a chopping board that, as you can see, just folds flat against the unit but when you need extra workspace ka-ching 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 there we go it's on these little levers and it gives you that extra side space that this kitchen is desperately missing you can obviously put cups on there or up there as well but when you've got a big family or when on the cases that we have been cooking in the van it's good to like put plates and things on here we've also made sandwiches on here and yeah but it's not used as a chopping board it is a sandwich no. so if anyone puts a knife on oh no i was i was got a knife i was like cutting a sandwich or something chris was like what the heck are you doing like, what it's not a chopping board woman. It's a this sandwich. is not a chopping board put, put this thing on a plate <laughs> well it is a chopping board no it's not i've not installed it as a chopping board of course it's a chopping board it's an ikea chopping board no it's not we're not ruining it might it. be a cheese board you know it might not be a chopping board i think it's a cheese board is it i don't know i don't i'm not sure it's a chopping board I think it's a chopping board. But it looks cool anyway. It might just, might just be a side implement. I don't know. But it's cool. I like it anyway. Either way, it was made up ready. You know, it's like, it's not like a bit of wood. It's, it was made up ready. It's the perfect size as well. Look how cool it fits. Perfect. And if you hold that a minute, babe. All you have to do is press the levers there and there. Ching. And it goes back down. Actually, someone asked me um, when I showed them before. And I'm not sure. If, I can't remember if I did it or not for the link to those because they wanted to add one they couldn't find the oh. they couldn't find the lever I'll, I'll do a little affiliate section for this for this video a van affiliate yeah. section so if anybody's interested in anything that we show in this video video <laughs> then check out the description box down below there'll be some links to everything that um chris thinks that you guys might be interested in okay mm -hmm. let's move on to the dinette and this is the little cutesy dinette this is probably one of the most used spaces in the van because this is where Mila sleeps we'll show you that a little bit later ignore that black mark on my hand no idea what that is and this is also where the girls sit when we travel so I think Isabel has this seat here and then Esme and Isla both sit there there's been a few questions saying why don't you have your children with seatbelts on we do the seatbelts are here we just when we're parked up somewhere we put them behind because they're annoying like sticking in your back um all they do is pull through um and then they're exactly the same as in any van the thing is there and they just work exactly the same as a normal a normal seat belt um uh, oops chris giving me daggers because um <laughs> dropped that a bit too hard <laughs> on his wood um i'll show you this setup for night time um tonight we're going to do like a a night feature as well so you guys can see what the van looks like during the day and during the night but this is a really good space a really really good space we can get at least you know well we could you can fit like two adults and a little one in the middle 
on these seats so they're a really good size and then we've got more storage space up here we've got this end one here it's got bread nappies and then tins they're half, actually half empty these aren't they we need to go shopping tomorrow. We do need to go shopping. Here's all the baked beans that we were talking about, <laughs> talking about in yesterday's video. Um, yeah, maybe more than... Oh, there's not about 12 cans in there. Anyway, um, pasta, spare water bottle. We've got loads of tuna. Is the tuna still going to be okay to eat? Probably, yeah. It's usually kept on a shelf. Yeah. It's usually kept on a shelf, but not in 40 degree heat for seven weeks like we've had. Mm. I don't know if to risk eating the tuna or not. Comment down below. Obviously, it wasn't always 40 degrees in the van, but there were times when it got up to that. There was a lot of times it was like that. So, <laughs> does that mean the tuna will now be gone off? Because we've not eaten it. I've got like tuna pasta and all sorts of meals that I don't dare make because I'm worried that the tuna's gone off and I'm going to give everyone food poisoning. So, comment down below is this still okay to eat or am I best throwing it? So, there are the cupboards up here. Ice lollies and things from home that we can't use or eat because the freezer just doesn't seem to freeze them. But yeah, these are pretty much empty right now. Okay, moving a little bit further up the van, we have the shower. Pop the lights on, babe, please. There we go. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I don't like Chris's modified, I don't like Chris's modified shower it's power head. shower head, lovely. It's good, it works well. It's got good power when you're in there. I don't like it's it, it's black, black though. <laughs> I just don't like it. Chris absolutely loves it, I don't. Not really much to show in here, to be honest. It's just a shower, guys. <laughs> it's got the door that you pull over. Um, it's a good size, works well, does the job. It's a door here for privacy, so whoever's in the shower, they've not only got like the shower door, which is obviously glass. Um, there's this here as well, that they can just pop over, so they've got privacy when they shower. Turn the light off for that. There we go. And then this side, we have la toilette. And the expensive mirror. That's a waste of blooming money. Um, <laughs> hey, don't forget to macerate the toilet, Doctor. Oh, yeah, we'll, we'll do. I mean, we've got great lights that Chris upgraded in here. So, I mean, look. Do, do you necessarily need the mirror? You don't need it, but it looks good. No, you don't. You can't even sit. I can't sit on the toilet and do my makeup in it because look how high he's put it. No, it needs to be that high. Doesn't need to be that high. High for you, yeah. No one else can see themselves in it. <laughs> <laughs> so space is a little bit tight in here because we've got this new air conditioning unit. You can, everyone can obviously fit in here and use a toilet. Hate this. It's like 1960s. No offense to anyone that's got like fluffy things on the top of the toilet. I think it's vile. No, I love it, man. Chris loves it. No, I'm sorry. Toilet, that's not for me. <laughs> I do like this bathroom. We've got the sink area here, which, oh my gosh, you have to clean out daily with everyone's women toothpaste spit it's disgusting but um <laughs> the amount of times so who's just used the sink for toothpaste go and wash it out is vile we've got loads of storage in here so we've got storage down here and then we've also got some storage up here okay toiletry bags makeup bags um little ones toothpaste after sun sun creams liquid talc lip balms um, and then mine as well as toiletry bags in there as well there's also some clips toilet roll random bits yeah I'm gonna show you trones we got some trones <laughs> these these are the big these are the junk pile of the bathroom the junk room they are literally full of junk so toiletry bags again we've got loads of hair products hair bands hair clips baubles um, Brushes. We've also got some medicines down in here that Chris takes and a few aspirin and things like that that I take and then we've got another Trone up here. I can't show you what's in there because I can't reach <laughs> I can't reach up there. It's too high up, but it's basically makeup bags And there's also some dry shampoo in there that I brought away like as a necessity I was like I definitely need dry shampoo. I'm, I'm definitely need it Not even been up there once and used it not used dry shampoo. I brought three bottles as well thinking I'd need it. 
think I'm gonna be so hot, my hair's just gonna be disgusting, I'll need it for like oomph, I'll need it for like, you know, that bit of volume. No, my hair's not been down whole trip, so I've not needed it at all. <laughs> so they're all still up there. But yeah, that's the bathroom. The light's nice. I'm not gonna is this it's a it's a nice light. Is it needed? No. Was it it's worth the money? Me. No, it was not. And then finally, right at the back of the van, we've got my bedroom. Jace is up here, just chilling, bless him. <laughs> um, we did start off this trip with a nice, big, juicy duvet on this bed. Not, it's not been on the bed once, has it, babe? Nope, <laughs> that got booted out. That got booted right out. I've got my pregnancy pillow up there. Um, we've got a big roof window. Pop our lights on our main ones just for a sec. Thank you. We've got loads of spotlights up here. And um, this is actually an extra wedge that the family before us had made for this space. It's actually not meant to be here. It's just meant to be like two single beds, but they co-slept with their baby. And we thought rather than take it out, it just makes like this big, massive, giant bed. Like it's bigger than Super King. I bought a Super King duvet did i buy super king duvet babe i can't remember now if it was king or super king either way i think it was super king was it super king i can't remember whichever size it was don't fit it like only covers half the bed so that's how big this bed space is and i thought we might as well just leave it in because number one it makes a nicer bigger bed and number two when this baby's born i'm currently pregnant with when we come on trips we'll be co-sleeping probably most likely so it makes sense to just keep that in here. I did a couple of bookshelves here. Um, Amelia's babies, which she's been playing with, but her babies usually go down there. Her iPad's there right now. We've got another window here, which gets open the second I open my eyes in the morning to let air through. <laughs> we tend to leave the roof one open, but when you open that one as well, it lets like a nice draft through and it's really nice. I kind of wish there was one on your side as well. Chris always says, I wish there was a window on my side as well. We might do that. Yeah, we might put a window also on Chris's side here. Right now we've just got our Sprinter van a picture up on the wall. And then we've got a DVD player, a white noise machine and a smart TV up there as well. Um, what else have we got up here? Two thrones. We've got the two white ones here and here. This one houses all of Chris's clothes. This one houses Mila and Jace's packing cubes. So all of Mila and Jace's clothes are in there. And then this middle section here houses mainly my clothes, but also um, swimwear. So swimwear and things are also in there. That's really bugging me that it's upside down. There we go. <laughs> But yeah, it's, I love this space up here. It's so nice and so, so cosy. Um, but it does have a door if you want to get changed up here or I don't know, whatever. Um, and also I really like Aww. looking from our bed up here. Or you can get dressed and um, shut the door and then get dressed behind it. You can, that's what we do, isn't it? Yeah. That's what the girls do, don't they, in the morning when we're all sat down there having breakfast. They come and get up here and they shut the door, not our bedroom door, the other door um, from the shower bit down there. Um, but yeah, um, what I really love is laying up here in bed, like on an evening time, reading my book or something. And then just looking all the way down the van and being able to see Jace and the girls just chilling in their own spaces. It's just so cozy and so nice. Okay, we're going to complete this video. Well, we're actually going to complete it tomorrow morning by showing you the front of the van, the inside, the cockpit. Um, but we're going to continue this video in a couple of hours when it gets a bit pick up, when it gets a bit darker, to show you our nighttime setup. Just like that, we are all ready for bed. The dinette transforms into a massive double, which Mila has full reign of and absolutely loves. And then down here, we've got Isabel and Jace, and then massive double. It's not a double, it's a Super King or more. Even Super King, a Super King bottom sheet doesn't fit this. It's too small, so it's huge, this. Absolutely huge. And then up top, we've got Esme, and Nyla in a gorgeous double up there. Best. 
Very, very nice That's indeed. The whole house. <laughs> so that is how we go from day into night. All right, let's have a bit of a geek out. So this van has 400 amp hours of AGM batteries underneath, which power everything in the rear alongside a 2000 watt Victron inverter and also a three kilowatt generator, petrol generator, which is basically the same setup as we had in the Sprinter van. We had 400 amp hours in there and also a two kilowatt inverter, which we changed to a three kilowatt for the, for the winter trip. But um, it's pretty much the same setup as we had in the Sprinter. This van does not have solar at all at the minute. So, and we don't, we don't really need it. I am gonna add it for, ne for our next trip for Defina, just because I think that it'll be a, ma a massive with the right solar panels it'll benefit the van massively charge wise because we like to be off-grid as much as possible when you're off-grid for a number of days and you have the inverter running all of your 240 volt sockets inside the van the batteries drain fast especially when there's seven people in here and everyone's trying to charge their phones their ipads macbooks whatever it might be and we're running an air conditioner as well so having solar added to this will help especially in the sunny countries in the summer with charging them back up whilst we're using them but in this van we don't really need it because we have a three kilowatt generator in here a three kilowatt petrol generator which with a full tank will run for 48 hours before it needs refueling again so it's got a massive fuel tank and it's really good so when the batteries run low from us using the inverter a lot. We can just turn the generator on and the generator powers a fast charger for the batteries, which then charges the batteries back up fast. So it's really good, like the system that's built into here is really good for that. And the generator charges the batteries up way faster than any amount of solar panels would do. But having solar will be good just to add an additional boost of energy going back into the batteries when we're parked up somewhere for a number of days. Um, so I am gonna add that for next time for sure but really, generally, we don't really need it. That being said, the battery bank is really good in here, but I am gonna upgrade it for next time. Again, the 400 amp hours does last a while. It probably lasts us like on normal usage without the AC running all night. It'll last us like three days and then it'll need charging up. Um, without that, with the AC running, it'll probably last us like overnight and then by midday the next day, we'll need to give it a top up because obviously the AC pulls a lot of power, especially when you're running it all night, but it will run all night and no problem. Um, it's a really, the one that we have in here is a really low wattage, really low energy one basically. It only pulls like 600 watts. So it'll run, it runs good um, without killing the batteries too much. And obviously you can always turn the generator on if you know they get a bit low or whatever. So the generator in here is really quiet so in the van it's a you can hear a very low like dull humming sound outside the van you can hardly hear anything so it's really good it's like it's a super it's a good setup for that but if you are parked up somewhere for a few days and there's other van lifers around and it's a bit quiet the area at night time especially you don't want to be running a generator or causing any noise at all to like pull attention to yourself then the battery the batteries pretty much do their job but I will be upgrading them for next time. I want an absolutely monster of a battery bank because at the side of the van, we have a number of lockers going down the van. One of them is for the batteries, for the for the rear area, for the leisure batteries, and the space is humongous. So I'm going to switch them to lithium batteries. I'm going to upgrade it to like a thousand amp hours if I can fit that in. So that we've basically got battery for absolutely days and we can run the air conditioners in here, which we're going to be adding for a number of days without having to worry about it too much. Um, that alongside solar and the generator that we already have will make it an absolutely monster setup for next time when we go away, especially when it's in the summer and we need to be running the AC. We are planning a winter trip in this thing. So another thing I'm gonna add as well is a weather station. Don't know if you remember from the Sprinter, anyone that's watching this, obviously the weather station was built into the Sprinter and it went with the Sprinter, but I'm gonna add a weather station to this. I kind of wanted to do it before the trip that we were just on, but I kind of run out of time with all the other jobs that I was doing. So I didn't, I just left that one. Uh, we didn't really need it for the summer. Um, because it's got like, the van's already got like an onboard temperature gauge and things like that in here. But um, yeah, I'm going to add a weather station, a weather station so that um, I, we can just geek out about the weather. If anyone remembers the Sprinter, you'll know what I'm talking about. So this van is a Mercedes Atigo lorry front end and frame, basically. The motorhome part is built on top of that frame, a Mercedes Atigo. It's like a 4.2 litre turbocharged diesel engine. It's full of power. This thing never struggles on anything um, over the thousands of miles that we've done this summer alone in it. 
it's never ever struggled once even in like you know sixth gear the top gear at like extremely low revs it's got so much torque that it'll pull it up any hill no no issues whatsoever um and the fact that i love the fact that it's just an absolute monster like it can carry so much weight it's a seven and a half ton vehicle we have a huge garage in the back and it just fits all of our stuff in perfectly like e-bikes scooters sub boards outdoor pull out kitchen clo extra clothes storage you name it we've got it in there and this thing just handles it like a beast this is fully set up to be fully off grid for longer periods of time and to carry all of the equipment that you'd want to use off grid you know your sports equipment you name it they kind of these are traditionally built for like race bikes uh, to go in the rear but yeah absolutely I, I love this this moto especially for the fact that it is just a monster and you can carry all your stuff like with no issues so with a big family like ours that's exactly what you need even though it's a much bigger vehicle and yeah you have to kind of think about a bit more about where you're going and what you're doing um you soon get used to that and you f you know you forget about that like this now is second nature to drive it i'll drive this anyway it doesn't worry me whatsoever when we set off on this trip and i'd i'd only driven it literally from the dealers to the house so when we set off on this trip i was like by the time we've driven the five hours to Dover, I bet I'm fully, fully confident and all good. And it took a little bit longer than that, definitely, because, you know, it was full just motorway driving the whole way to Dover, but not much longer. You know, a few, a few of those tight, twisty French roads as soon as we crossed the border. And I was like, yeah, this is cool. No problem. No issues. So like anyone wondering, like, or scared of getting like a huge, big, a bigger vehicle because it's like daunting to drive or whatever. Like, trust me, you're like within no time, you'll, f you'll be driving it like as if it was a sprinter or, you know, a medium based van it's um it's mad how quick you get used to it